Hi everybody, Blake with Boca Bearings, team driver. Um, today we've got our Caster ZX1.5R Nitro Buggy, and we're going to be installing uh, some clutch bearings and doing some clutch maintenance using Boca's premium ceramics. Uh, we've got a couple bearings out and ready to go here. A couple of the tools that we're going to need for this is going to be a 2.0 hex wrench, a 2.5 ball end, and a 2.0. So we're going to need some sandpaper for our clutch valve and some blue Loctite. And we're also going to need some pliers and some paper towels. So we'll dive right in here and show you how to do this. All right, so we're going to pull the body off and set it aside. I'll usually remove the air cleaner, a little bit easier access. First thing we need to do is take off our safety for the throttle, throttle safety spring, and usually to pop the throttle linkage off I'll grab a hold of something around the brakes and pop it off, pretty simple there. And we need to disconnect our fuel line, disconnect our pressure line off the exhaust, tuck those up and out of the way. Remove the front screw from the exhaust pipe, or loosen it up anyways. And we need to remove the four mounting screws that hold the motor in place. I use the ball end wrench for this so you can get at it at an angle. Makes it a little bit easier to pull out. Typically I'll leave the exhaust hooked up, that way you don't have to worry about damaging your exhaust gaskets, and it's pretty simple to take it all out in one piece. Alright, now we've got all four screws done, the motor will come out, set your screws aside. And we set the car aside. So, we have our clutch bell hooked up here. It spins pretty freely because it does have a, a pretty fresh set of bearings in it. Break out a paper towel here. I'll take my 2.0 and remove the screw at the front that holds your bearings and clutch bell in place. typically like to use the screws that come with the Savox servo kits if your motor, uh, the tapping is, allows for it because it has a large diameter head and it works out perfect to thread in there and hold in pretty tight and it's long enough that it'll only come out in a, a small amount in case it, if it ever does break free. We take the clutch bell off, remove the bearings. So what we're going to look for in our clutch bell, and these, uh, these clutch shoes have a few races on them, uh, what we're going to be looking for is mushrooming, major issues where it looks like stuff's hanging off and could, could potentially drag on the inside of the clutch bell. Uh, these all seem to be looking pretty good, don't seem to be too out of place. I'm going to double check the springs, just pulling them a little bit, see if they all come off. And they all snap back into place where they're supposed to, everything feels tight compression in our motor. We set that aside for the time being. Next what we want to do is take the bearings out of the clutch bell. Standard 5x10 bearings. Set those aside. When you're doing your clutch maintenance, one of the things you want to look for is the inside of the clutch bell. Um, using aluminum shoes, it's going to leave a residue inside your, inside your clutch bell. As you can see, some dust coming off in my fingers. We're going to use some standard 80 grit sandpaper. I like to try and find the, the thinner stuff out of the rolls. It works pretty good to keep a batch of it in your toolbox. Just rip off a piece. Just run through the inside of the clutch belt. 
try and get it nice and smooth and get all the uh, aluminum stuck to the sides out of there. If it's really bad, you can use a sanding drum on a Dremel tool and just lightly go across the inside until you get it nice and smooth. You can see all the stuff that's come out of there. All right, so I'm gonna grab a clean paper towel, go through and wipe everything out of the inside, try and get all that sandpaper dust and any any clutch dust, anything like that, out of there. Clutch belts cleaned up and ready to go. I'm going to throw our, our bearings in now and start getting everything lined up. Make sure that uh, our shimming looks okay. That aside. We'll grab the motor here again. We'll slide our first bearing on. Make sure everything feels good there. Put the clutch bell on there. Grab our other bearing and put it right in the end. Most of the time you can get uh, everything shimmed pretty well um, without having to add any extra shims, depending on if you have a shim behind behind your flywheel. Uh, occasionally you may have to add a shim behind this first bearing uh, between the collet there and the bearing. And, uh, just to get your shimming correct. So before I, before I throw any Loctite on it, screw the screw in and lock, you know, lock it down in place and see how our, our play feels. Um, you never want it to be tight or bound up. You always want to have just a little bit of play. I'll try and show you what I mean here. Alright, so we got it tightened down. What we're looking for is just a little bit of movement. Just enough back and forth to where it's not locked up. Feels pretty good there. I don't believe I'm missing any shims. Double check there, make sure. Yeah, it feels pretty good there. Just a little bit of movement so it's not locked up. And one thing you'll notice with brand new ceramic bearings is they're going to roll pretty freely, but after you get a couple minutes of runtime on them, they're going to be much, much further. Uh, it's going to spin incredibly free. So we're going to pull this screw back out and put a little drop of blue Loctite on it just to keep it from coming out. We just want to use a very, very small amount just as a precaution to keep everything going. exhaust pipe still on there, kept it kind of easy, we can put it back in place, and start getting uh, our mounting screws back in.
set it back up here. I'll try not to block the camera while I do this. Snaps right back in place. Let's see, we've got our fuel line and our pressure line hooked back up. Kept them close so they're easy to put back where they belong. You lose signal, lose battery power. Always good to have a safety device to keep it from going wide open throttle and destroying the car and anybody in its way. And we need a new zip tie for that. But last but not least is going to be our air cleaner. And there we are. One thing to always, always check is to make sure that uh, you've got good play between between your clutch bell and your flywheel, what I'll usually do is put one finger on the bottom and use the other finger on the clutch bell and you just want to have just a little bit of movement when you hold that flywheel or the, uh, the spur gear in place to where your clutch bell moves just a touch. And if you listen you can just barely hear it moving back and forth. And that's about all you need to worry about as far as clutch maintenance unless you're replacing springs or shoes. There are different clutch setups out there. Um, the clutch setup that I'm using is off of a team-associated RCA. Uh, the three-shoe system is extremely easy to